In this video, we're going to look at ways that R can handle categorical variables. Jonathan collected some categorical uh, data from his classmates, uh, which had to do with their favorite colors. Our first step will be to get the data into R. Sometimes that's called wrangling the data. Luckily, this is an electronic uh, file, so I can just copy that data and find a text editor. I'm going to use the text editor that's in R already, and so I'm going to paste that here. Now, of course, this is not in a form that R can handle it. What I need to do is maybe build an object called data, and I'll use that less than minus sign to say that I'm going to build this into a, a vector. And then I'll need to include each of these um, words in uh, parentheses so that it makes some characters. If I don't do this for each one of these words, then R would look at the word and think it's supposed to be an object, and that object has not been defined yet. Now, of course, this in reality is just one long line of code. R doesn't mind us breaking this uh, into a number of lines for us to be able to read. R would just go along here and look and say, OK, I'm concatenating some data. It realizes that it hasn't got to the closing parentheses yet, so it just goes on to the next uh, line until it finds that closing parentheses for this can can concatenation function. So now we've got this object data that contains all of these char uh, characters, these character variable, these character values um, in a vector. So we'd like to count up the frequency of how many reds there are, how many blues there are, how many greens there are, and so on. We could do that by hand, but of course R has a function that does that. It's called table. So if we ask R to look at the table of data, it will do that counting for us. We can do that uh, by copying this data from the word processor and pasting it into an R console. The nice thing about R Studio is if I highlight that amount and then press run, then it does it for me. And there's the results of the table. I've got eight blues, six greens, one orange, two others, three purples, uh, three reds, and four yellows. Notice that table automatically alphabetizes the, uh, the particular characters, the character values. Now, a preferred data structure in R is to have things as data frames. So I'd like to convert this table to a data frame as follows. The function data frame can work on different combinations of objects. If it works on a table, then it builds a data frame as follows. Let's highlight this and run it. And so now that that uh, data is output as follows. It shows the, the data and the frequency of each of, of those uh, characteristics. Now we can save this data frame as an object. I'm going to call it data.df to remind me that that's the data frame of the, of the material. Furthermore, once I've got a data frame object, I can pull off columns from that data frame. So here I'm looking at data frame and then square brackets. This is sometimes called subsetting. I want to, to take all of the rows but I only want to have the first column. So that's going to give me those, these categories. Uh, the, the categories happen to be blue, green, orange, and so on. And then I want to look at the frequency, and I want to pull, so I, I want to, to subset just the second column. So let's ask R to show us what's currently now in this cat object and that frequency object. Again, I'll highlight what I want to run and press that. So you'll notice that uh, cat contains those 
uh, objects blue green orange other purple red and yellow and the frequencies are eight six one and so on those really are just these two columns So I only did that so that I could see what those were and verify that they were pulling the right things off. So let's take that out of our script. Now I'd like to build a, a bar plot of these. And uh, the nice function there is to do a bar plot of the frequencies. And if I, since I've already run that other stuff, it's already in R's memory, I can just run the bar plot. And there it is. I pulled this window up to show the, the plot a little bit more. Of course, there's a lot more that we want to put on this bar plot. We'd like to have a, a title for the bar plot. We'd like to explain what this left-hand margin, what this y-axis is measuring, maybe what the x-axis is me measuring, and what the values are down here. Those additional features are handled by some options. Let me put those options in. Now remember, R doesn't mind us putting things from one line onto another line in the script. It'll, it will realize that we're still doing the bar plot. An option in bar plot is main, which has to do with the, with the title. Let me run that script. So I highlighted it and pressed run. Uh, favorite colors in Jonathan's, of Jonathan's classmates. Depending on the the uh, version of, of an R that you're using, this process of getting things from the script editor into the console will vary a little bit. Now I'd like to label this y-axis. Now notice some things that are going on here. Bar plot begins with the parentheses and it ends with the parentheses. Each one of the, th the items that are put into bar plot are separated by a comma. So we're bar plotting the frequency, uh, the FREQ. Uh, we put this uh, main title on it. We want to put uh, a X label on there. We want that to be, I mean, a Y label. Y lab is the command that's going to put a, a Y label over here. So let's highlight and run that. Now, I would like to put the label of each one of these uh, bars in there. And we do that by, first of all, making sure that we've got a comma in between each one of these commands. And the command for that is names.arg. And that's going to be equal to whatever's in this vector, the, the uh, cat vector. Uh, remember that what that was up here were, were these names in that particular order. And uh, so let's highlight that and run it. Now we've got a problem here. Some of the names were so large that R made a decision not to write some of them in because they didn't fit. We can handle that by turning these and having them printed vertically instead. And that's a mysterious command called LAS. So remember, we're separating everything by a comma. And so this is the LAS command. LAS is equal to 2. We'll write those uh, vertically in that way. OK, that's a fairly reasonable graph of this data. I added the uh, uh, COL for color, color equals, and then in parentheses, what color you want it to be, in this case, blue. So there's a, f a fairly reasonable graph. One thing that I don't like here is, is other, because it listed these alphabetically. Other kind of ended up here somewhere in the middle. I want other to be down on, there on the end. See, there's the first one, the second one, the third one. I want this fourth one, five, six, seven, to be where the seventh one is. So we can do that in the following way. We're going to worry about reordering the data frame. Now remember up here we use these square brackets to say I want everything in column 2. 
Now here what I'm saying is that I want the rows to be listed in this order. So I've given it a vector that shows the order that I want the rows listed in. The first row, the second row, the third row, and then the fifth, sixth, seventh, and finally the fourth at the end. And I'm not putting any restrictions on the columns. The columns are just going to stay the same. I'm going to save that object as data.df2. And then I'll do this same thing that I did up here. But now this is going to be very easy to do because I want to plot something, but I need to, to find this category. So I need to do that script but apply it to df2 instead of df. So I'm highlighting that chunk of code that I want to copy. I'm copying that and I'm pasting it down here. But now I want this to work on... Uh, oops. So I'm highlighting this. I'm going to edit. I'm copying that. I'm bringing it down here and I'm pasting it into there. Now, what I want this to do is I want to have cat now be the, the categories from D2 because they're in a different order now, and I want the frequency to be the frequency from uh, data.df2 because they're in a different order, and then we want to, and then we can just run the rest of this script. So, Let's highlight everything and see how it goes. Voila! Notice that it just reordered this information here. We did that by this subsetting command on the, the data df and build a new df with the, with the rows um, being put in a different order. So now other is over here on the end. Okay, now let's suppose that we wanted to have these listed in the order of the largest down to the smallest. The nice thing is that R has a command called order. Let's look at that command for a few minutes. So here I'm asking R to, to look at order of the, of the frequencies. So let's uh, run that little part of, of code. And notice that it says three, seven, four, five, six, two, one. Okay, one is the largest. Three, one, two, three. The third item is the smallest. The seventh item is the next to the smallest, and so on. Now change this command right here to a minus freak and look at the order again and it says that the order in size of the columns from the largest to the smallest is going to be one two and then six and then five uh, then four and then five and then uh, seven and and finally back to three okay so so if I take that and I'll save that in an object called ORD. So it's going to be this vector from the largest to the smallest. And now let's, let's uh, rebuild our, our data frame. So look at what we're doing. We're taking our, our data frame 2 that we had worked on before. We, uh, we found out what the order of the, fr of the frequency was from that one and uh, now that ORD is now a vector so I don't need to use the C here up here I needed to use the C so that I could build a vector right there okay but ORD is already a vector so we're giving it a vector showing us what order we want the rows to be in 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 this data frame and so let's take a, a look at uh, at uh, data.df3 and run this. I'll have to hang on so I can show this. 
So there we really built our data frame uh, according to the order of largest to smallest in the frequency and there they are. The blues the largest, greens next largest and so on. So now we'd be able to take this data set uh, data.df3 and run it through that script and be able to produce what we sometimes call a Pareto chart. So I'm going to copy that script that we're interested in. Um, so here are the things that I was looking to order from largest to smallest uh, frequency. So now we'd like to build the code that would build that bar plot. So remember, we'll just need to take this code up here where we get the, the categories in the right order. We look at the frequency in the right orders and then we'll do that bar plot. Um, so I'm going to copy that and paste that in here. Okay, But now I want to do all of those things for D3 where things are are reordered and now when I run that code highlight it all and run it then it builds this plot it keeps all of these in the right order and so on some of the things that I want you to notice here is how you can reuse script information to when you want things to be rebuilt in a different way now one last thing that I want to look at here I want to to uh, the this this last example here is sometimes called a Pareto chart. If you're asked to build the Pareto chart in some homework, then you need to order it in this from the largest to smallest. So the last thing I'd like to look at in this video is is creating a relative frequency data frame and bar plot. I'm going to work with our data dot. Uh, uh, df2 because things were written in a nice order there. L let me just run th this much of the code so that we see the, the plot that we're looking at over here. Okay, we wanted other to be on the end and these to be in alphabetical order. That's how d2 does it. But now I'd like to just change this frequency over here and have it a relative frequency. Instead of it counting the total number of points here, I'd like this to either be a percentage or a, uh, or a fraction. That means we need to change the values of the frequencies. At this point in our script, cat shows the, uh, the first column of the data frame, the, the colors, blue, green, orange, purple, red, yellow, and other. And the uh, and freak F R E Q shows uh, the frequency that each of those were. Now the sum of freak is going to count up the total number that's there. Okay, so let's just run that and see. There's 27 all total. We could come come back up here where we saw. Sorry, <laughs> we come back up uh, here where we saw this data, the 8, 6, 4, 3, 3, 2, and 1. That adds up to a total of, of 27. I'm going to store that in an object called n. So we've got n items in this sample. And we'd like to look at, at the f frequency divided by that n. Let's run that much code. And sure, sure enough, those are, are those various frequencies. So now I need to build a data frame with that information. So let me call this relative frequency. And, and build a data frame that has a first column made up of the categories and the second column made up of these relative frequencies that we've made. Now notice that we've used this command data frame in a number of different ways here and this is another way that it can be used. You can 
can give it uh, a number of of uh, vectors that you want to to be the columns. So let's let's run that, and sure sure enough, now we've got a data frame, this table that's now showing us these relative frequencies. So of course I could take this data frame and run it through our script to build a bar plot with relative frequencies on the on the side. So I'm going to store that data frame as some object. I'm going to call it data.df4 and then I want to run that data through our script that we've been copying and pasting. So we'll do like we've done in the past. We uh, we need to have these pieces of stuff. Uh, now actually I'm not going to copy the cat and the frequency here because I'm going to be using cat and relative frequency in our work here. So I'm going to copy that and put it So I copied that and I'm going to paste it right here. Okay. Now here I want to to do a bar plot of relative frequency now. And I want this to be uh, cat is still okay there. And we'll plot that in blue. Oh, and I better change this uh, Y lab because it's now a relative frequency. So notice that when we run that script, now this Y axis is really relative frequencies. Of course, we could change those to, uh, to percents um, by just simply saying, instead of the fractional amount, Let's take a hundred times each one of these values, and then if we run that relative frequency percent, let's change that title that we've got over there, and then run that, and there's the relative frequency percent. So this blue is more than 25%. This orange is a little bit less than 5%, and so on. Okay. I hope that's helpful.